Jay Wiz leaving a Chris Brown birthday party. One of the, one of the homies that got into it with a nigga inside, and then they told security that it was some niggas robbing niggas outside. You know what I'm saying? This Chris Brown birthday party is off La Brea. <laughs> off La Brea, so it's like in the trenches, low key. So it's like all the little model joints, all the all the celebrities, all the hood niggas, like we all right here. And niggas trying to catch niggas outside. But I actually say that I found peace with being with family more. Just because my older cousin Mike, like I always say that my older cousin Mike was the one that was like the big brother of my life, a male role model. Like thought he was the coolest nigga, you know what I'm saying? Always handled his business, wanted to be like him. So when like everything in the world was like feeling crazy, as long as like I was with my older cousin, it's like he just felt like he had everything figured out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like being around family, like my mom's side, like that was really it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say cousin, yeah, because it it, it it leads me to somewhere else. I ain't speaking cuz funeral, still searching for the words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you when you when you spit those bars, that shit is part poetry to me. I ain't speaking, it's I ain't speaking cuz funeral, still searching for the words. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I get my mind. shot before they turn it into a verb. <laughs> Help me finish it. I hope I get my shot before they turn me into a bird. Ain't no limits as far as what I achieve. I just <laughs> I could hope be I at least half of half of what my grandma seeing me. That's yeah, that's opening four bars, bro. All right. So when we uh when we younger, bro, our we got our parents and our the people in our family, the people who fuck with us, the mm. people who really believe in us. Yeah. They install those words and those uh that, that they try to install that power in us, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But a lot of that times it comes from either feeling in my spirit that my baby is going down the wrong path or actually seeing him going down the wrong path or seeing her go down the wrong path. And I just want to know at those times when you was feeling those words from your grandma and stuff or mm -hmm. him, whoever you was hearing them from at those times, where were you? What were you running from when we talk about purpose? Yeah. And what did you feel? Because a lot of times when we're there, we feel it's something we need to be yeah. at the moment. Yeah. And then like when we feel like we're doing it because we feel like we need to be, we get locked into it because it's damn near no way out. Mm -hmm. So where were we at? Where was where I wasn't supposed to be? Yeah. What, were, what was we doing? And what I shouldn't have been running from, but I was running from it. Yeah. Um. But ironic, like it's super ironic that you like chose them bars, you know what I'm saying? Like them for it because uh I start off with saying that I ain't speaking at cuz funeral still searching for the words was um he had died in a car wreck, you know what I'm saying? Like was just too tired, sleep behind the wheel, died instantly. And I didn't have the words because I had lost so many niggas to like violence, like just being outside, like doing dumb shit. And when that happened, it's like I felt like that was one of the first times I like kind of felt like some animosity like towards. Uh, you know me, it's like uh, like I don't like I don't know to be mad at this time. You know what I'm saying? Like why they take the nigga so young again? I felt like he was just getting like his footsteps right. You know what I'm saying? So that line in the perspective of it's no limit of what you know I can be if I could be at least half of what my grandma see in me. It's like cause you, it's easy to get fooled into that. It's like, man, but even my cousin that died young, he seen me on the path to like figuring out. I'm like, bro, you can't even be here to celebrate it with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I've always been, I've always been the one to play the line, like the, like play the fence on the shit, to be completely honest. Like I've always been a great representation of what niggas could achieve if they, they just don't get too consumed by the streets or believe like that's all, you know, are they really good at? It's like I seen, I think I wrote this down one time, but it's like uh, one of the homies, I was like, I don't feel like he think he good at anything, but like, shoot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, and he died young. Like, it's a lot of examples of that. And I was just like, man, I have to find out like a path that makes sense. People always tell me I was going to speak for people. As quiet as I am, you know what I'm saying? But I knew that I had like the, the natural like gravitation is like man people fuck with me they trust me when I dropped my first music 
niggas listen to me off rip and I thought I was trash. But it's like, oh, that nigga, Aaron, like, it's still Aaron at that time. You feel me? It's like Aaron, AL, like, it's like, fuck, we just fuck with bro, though. You feel me? So, by spinning, give me a chance. I was like, I take this serious. Um, grandparents, my grandmother is like, they didn't even forward rap like that. They didn't forward rap. Like, you know how I was. It's like, oh, y'all satin jeans. Like, yeah, you know, y'all yeah. cousin and everything. It's like, I, once you convince the elders, it's like, nah, you got to, like, really pay attention to, like, what I'm doing, though. It's like those characters, me, you, T, was speaking on a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. It's like somebody has to tell those stories because we need that representation. Yeah. Started rapping because I heard Good Kid Mad City. You feel me? Like, that was the first time I felt like I had representation, bro. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like, why you said the light skin shit? Like, the funny, like, ah, uh, like, this nigga, like, you probably don't be on that shit or, like, got, like, real stories. It's like, I shouldn't have to suffer in silence and, like, you know, like, feel like, oh, I should be a certain way because everybody else see you like that. And it's like, so it is a, it is a nigga who can make it out of, like, crazy situations or you got the homies who be on this uh, institutionalized and they look at you and they like, man, you really give niggas hope? Like, that's been my shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's easy to go back and forth a lot, playing ping pong with that shit for real. Why you playing? Why you feel like you got to play the line though? Play the fence, play the, uh, at the time. It's family, it's family. Cause it's like, it's not like we grew up outside of this shit and I'm going back to like, you know, going back to the trenches like, hey, I could represent y'all. It's like, no, nah, niggas, like, I came from this shit, too. Y'all seen a nigga that can, like, make shit possible. So it's like, I mean, you feel obligated to family, you know? It's like, that's truly it. I don't try to do the most for everybody. It's like, people fuck with me. I, I love them to death. But it's like, if you ever see me out, I'm with the same niggas. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I pop out with the same people so much. Places we go, they would ask about my homies by name. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not like I feel like I have to look a certain way or play a certain role for other people's satisfaction. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's family, bro. You feel yeah. me? Like, some, it's just be picking at me sometimes. Like, we used to do shit and, like, used to be fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, at the time, was a lot of it thrill-seeking too, though? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It was thrill-seeking, but it was also, I can't say a lot of it. A lot of it wasn't thrill seeking for me. A lot of it for me was just kind of being lost and like just kind of like mad because I couldn't figure out where I wanted to be at in life. You know, it's like everybody was telling me what I needed to do. It's like that's the cons of like being like soft spoken. You know what I'm saying? Not like really telling niggas like what the fuck you interested in and all that. You know, like you you have certain um, people would talk like teachers and you know life coaches or something like of the sort that'll tell you like, yo, you should go to school, do this and that and paint out your whole life for you. But it's like, no, nah, I got to figure out exactly what I need to do. So in that moment, if I'm just having fun with the homies and shit and niggas is like, we losing people at the same time. It's like, that was my camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like TJ, like that nigga can even tell you at the time, bro, all I wanted to do was hoop. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of to get my like my mind off the shit. It's getting cut from the team. It's like so. With that being said, it's like nigga, we got saw. You feel yeah. me? Like yeah, yeah. It's like so. I I connected more with that than team like team player type shit. It's like we just chilling with the family. Like niggas, I call my brothers and shit. So yeah. it seems like because I'm speaking from personal experience too. Like as yeah. a person who uh, quiet. But everybody just draws to them and mm-hmm. tell them all the information or whatever. Whole oh, life story, but trust me. And I hold that like dearly, so I want you mm-hmm. to be able to trust me. It seemed like, man, I'm a, from my standpoint, how I was is, yeah, y'all tell me what I, who I am, what I could be, and all of that. That's fucking pressure. Yeah. It's pressure to have to. First of all, I do want to enjoy my homies and do this and do that. Yeah. But it's pressure to be different. It's yeah. pressure to what if I what if I'm not who y'all say I am? It's it's the pressure of looking perfect. I was like, bro, that's why I made I ain't perfect. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was still like, even at that point, 
when I made that song, it was like 20, 2019, 2018, I made I Ain't Perfect. It's like, even then, bro, it's like, I still didn't feel like people was hearing me. It's like, I make music that people fuck with. It's like, oh, you know the rap, man. It's like, it's, those are real stories. I don't know if y'all listening or not. And then they, like, oh, he's so humble in the way that he carries himself. And it's like, I still feel like I had to be a certain way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but like, let me do this I Ain't Perfect shit just so I can tell y'all, you know, give it to y'all raw type shit. You know what I'm saying? But it is the pressure of, Coming up and being, you know, a little quiet, it's like, I used to think if I just mess up, like, the world was in it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you kind of got to, like, not take life as serious sometimes, bro. Yeah. It's like, but I don't want to not take it so serious to where I don't complete, like, what I know I can do. So it's a, it's a thin line. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the back and forth, honestly. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, because you want to be human and enjoy just regular shit sometimes, but it's like, you know, I ain't your calling, my nigga. It's like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't do the same shit that everybody get to do. If you don't mind me asking, if you don't mind diving into it, when you was doing those things that wasn't so towards your, uh, what you should be doing. Of course, we don't be knowing our, what our purpose is. But mm-hmm. you know, what do those things look like? Um, I would say it was indulging in. Indulging in just being in the shit that you knew could be the wrong place at the wrong time, but you'll do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that looked like hanging out at the trap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, we homies, like, it's cool. It's like, go back two days, like, what happened to such and such? It's like, oh, you ain't here? Like, that nigga just ran through here and robbed the whole joint. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wait, what niggas was chilling with us a couple days ago? Like, fuck it, what niggas gonna do? You know what I'm saying? And it's, um, my little cousin called me, hey, let me hit up. Oh, yeah, you got the, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, why am I in the mix so much? Yeah. And so comfortable with it, though. You feel me, bro? It's like, it's almost a matter of, like, just because I know I could. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's all we doing right now. It's like, not all that I know, but it's like my brothers, like my family and shit. So it wasn't nothing, like, too crazy. But it's like, as you tell the stories to the right person, it's just like, it go wait, that's normal to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I was yeah, like, oh yeah. shit, you know, you forget sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah just, just being outside too much. So obviously, in those times, you was, uh, sorry, my fucking nose is itching. Right? <laughs> obviously, in those times, you knew exactly what you were doing. And, you know, you knew, you, you, yeah. you, you the one people kind of hanging on for the right decision. So, mm-hmm. Why not just be like, all right, shit, this shit is... You know they fall under your leadership yeah. anyway, your voice yeah. anyway. If you say something, they kind of, you know, they respect you in a sense. Too. Yeah. Why not just be like, yo, we got to find a different way, bro. That's exactly what it was, though. I think it's because I didn't know the other way yet. You didn't know the other nah, way? Nah. It's like, now you know what you're doing is wrong, but it's like, what are we going to do instead of, like... I mean, like, it would be like... For me to not have an answer on the music shit, bro, it's just, I told you I had a plan, like, before we press yes, record sir. on this joint, you feel me? So yeah. it's like, as serious as ever. But it's like, before then, it's like, you telling niggas to trust you and then go home, it's like, well, I don't know what the fuck we gonna do instead of this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a lot of pressure too. Mm-hmm. It's, it is, it's, it's, making, it's making a decision before you have a plan. And uh, it's... Honestly, it's a fear. You know what I'm saying? It's running away from purpose at that point because if they do listen to you, leadership, bro, mm. it's like it, it's up to you to figure it out. Mm. Not everybody want to do that shit, though. You know what I'm saying? The majority of people don't want to do that. It's like that's why so many niggas from the inner city end up in them situations. It's like, man, you expect me to lead like these bunches of niggas? Like, it's like the closest thing that we had to the representation was like a lot of rappers and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I thought it was funny when I started telling the homies, talking to like some politicians. Like, niggas uh-huh. running for, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's like, like, just running for city. You know? It's like, what you gonna do with that? And like, that's when I got comfortable with it. I'm like, shit, I don't know. But I know it's better than what the fuck we doing. Yeah. You feel me? So, it's like, yeah, it's just experimenting, bro. Nobody has really took that leap and the fear of like, not knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Those and all you look, you've lost. Um, mm-hmm. 
at some time you become numb to it. But even before we go there, mm. you said you lost. You had a problem with God at a moment. Yeah. Losing something so close to you, so young. Mm. And a lot of people go down that path and be like, hey, it's a never come back moment. Yeah. What's that coming to God moment look like? Coming back to God moment or coming to God or talking to him, like what that look like? That's a great question. Cause I'm trying to even picture the exact moment. It was like it was, I was 21 at the time. 21 years old. Um, I want to go out on the limbo and say that it might have been. It had it had to be something something with the music just because I was just starting at twenty one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like twenty twenty one is when I first started. Um, I think I was able to vent more through my music, and I think that was me almost giving God like a fair chance on some like that was like the real conversation. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just being stubborn and just shutting down on some like. Man, like how that, like how's that, you know, happen like that? It's like I don't know to be mad at, so it's like I ain't supposed to take niggas young like that. But through, I think it was just yeah, through being with family and uh, finding more purpose in my music, it's like it, I was kind of forced to like have more combos with God to like go along this journey. You feel me? It's like I don't even think because it it continued to happen. You know what I'm saying? I kept losing homies. Like that was like it was just regular. Summertime, I didn't matter like what time of the year it was, but mm-hmm. it's like at the point I had to take my RPs out of my body. You know what I'm saying? It's like I just didn't want to like look at that no more. But it's like I think it was just a, I think it was just a purpose. Purpose, like I, I think it was an immature decision to not to to feel that way at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's like Bryce gets young and angry. It's like, but. It's like, who's to say, like, I get to make a decision on whether, you know, it's my cousin's time to go or not. But, yeah, yeah I think it just came with growing up, bro. I didn't, like, start going to church, and it's like, it's no miraculous story. Yeah. Yeah, it was just maturity. And that's that's miraculous time. enough. Hey, I'll take that. Because I'm yeah. saying, like, we love our people even yeah. more than we love God at times before we even mm-hmm. know how much we should be loving on God because, look, I'm yeah. here, my dog. Yeah. So go. we that's like the closest thing to our heart. So mm-hmm. for you to be able to turn back to God yeah. where most people don't, mm-hmm. that is miraculous to me. And I won't put a, I won't, I won't put a dim, a dimming on God's life by saying that's not miraculous to me. I appreciate that. To me, yeah. for real, because it's real. not easy to come from hating you yeah. to, because why the fuck this happened to him? Nah, for real. Like one of them, one of the good ones, one of the ones like the minds. You feel me? Like yeah, like like really a great nigga, bro. We we don't have friends because friends went through it too. Your friends went through it too. Your people went through it too. Yeah, They're close. What they look like talking to them about it? Like, cause you say you vent to your music. Yeah, and it's crazy that we don't really vent to each other. I feel like God put us here for togetherness. Yeah, we just don't communicate with each other. I in the moment feel like them. I'm the only one feeling this shit because they not. Acting how I'm acting up, but yeah. we all like kind of take it our own type of way. Nah, that was that was an issue though. Like you know, when it comes to family, it's like just kind of as like everything. Everybody just still be cool, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is gonna be all right instead of actually like having a conversation about it. But uh, I will say, um, the fact that I even said it was like you know play on maturity is like man, I need to like grow up and. Learning that communicate, talking about my feelings, like, you know, is like important, you feel me? So, I mean, you can ask, you can ask the homies, like, you can ask Petey, Sam, like, Trey, Ray, like, anybody's like, within the past, like, four, I can say within, like, the past four years, it's like, we really sit down and I've been preaching that transparency, like, with the homies, Mm -hmm. Uh, like, right hand, like, that's, like, we take pride in it. Like people see us out, it's like the way we kick it is even different. You know what I'm saying? You see us with the same group of people, and it's uh, 
So I was laughing and then it was like, we'll get into a real combo. Everybody talking about it, feel like for real about a situation. And that just causes, you know, more people to gravitate towards us. But I always tell Petey and Sam, bro, we blessed. Like, it's a privilege to have a circle to where we can talk to each other about real life shit. Like, anything, bro. Mm -hmm. Put that on everything. So it's like the fact that back when I was 21, because that passed away, you know, and I, I, I just took it to the music, you know what I'm saying? But if I had the same method that I did, now, you know, things would have went different. Yeah. But, I mean, it's as simple as that. I just wasn't in a communicative, like, mindset yeah. at the time. But I was, like, now we have that, like, I'm all with the transparency, bro. Why the switch? Is it you leading in that switch, too? Is yeah. it How do you pull your dudes to the side? Because it ain't easy to conversate. Yeah. With with the homies all the time because we don't know how to communicate that right. type of stuff. I was tired. I was tired of people hurting, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Because you to, like one of my one of uh, my bars, like one of my freestyles. I said, uh, um, just talking about I seen I seen all my homies to the point they wanted to like kill some. Like I said, it was like playing off of another bar, of course, another line. But it's like that was like just. Blame it like real as it gets, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like I don't like seeing my people hurting. It's like feel like you can't do nothing about it. And it's like if I couldn't offer no bread, I can't give you nowhere to stay. I can't be like, oh, bro, here's some wheels, my nigga. It's like we didn't really have anything um, tangible to offer, you know what I'm saying? But it's like so much of this shit could be cured if we just communicate. And I know that I can do that, and I know that niggas trust me. It's like so that came with getting older. It's like the younger me. It's always gravitated toward me when I was fighting. I knew that. A little bit older, it's like, all right, I start putting out some content, making sure I ain't lying about shit. It's like I'm being real. That being they real. know. Yeah, I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm, rap is credible. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, so I take pride in even being able to do that. But, you know, getting older again, it's just now I can, like, take the role, like, full on. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can talk to you about, oh, I got this plan, bro. I know what I'm doing with the music shit. Like, we're going to take it here and there. But it, it takes a lot of faith, full circle moment. <laughs> you feel me? Mm -hmm. It's like, at a time, because I lost faith. Like, we was talking about that. So, yeah. that's what it is. Power. Yeah. You found your power. Mm -hmm. You knew of your power. Yeah. But you probably didn't know how powerful it was. Mm -hmm. Grabbing that power and taking control of it and really stepping in it that because that's kind of where I am now like starting to step into the power and use it for the good you know what I'm saying because mm -hmm. I know how I can have people sit and listening to me so trying not to manipulate situations and stuff like that and having them to actually be able to trust being able to talk to me and stuff like yeah. that how important is that power for you how did you know, like, nah, this is this shit is real, bro. Yeah. I really have something here yeah. that I got to treat precious because a lot of our people lose. If, if I ain't the one, they feel like ain't no one type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I really believed in you and yeah. you let me down. Yeah. That's, that's the representation, bro. Like, that's it. Um, the power is it's everything. It's... um. I say it's like my life. You know what I'm saying? It's first and foremost. It's like once you find it, it's like, oh, like this is like this is the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like to really put it into perspective. It's like how I utilize it, where we go from here is like, you know, good decision making, but you know what to lean into to like make some shit happen. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So yeah, it's my life first and foremost. Um, because I don't feel like I can help anybody else until I help myself. Like I gotta figure, you know figure it out to like pass on the game and uh, you know put niggas in positions to win and shit. Yes yeah. sir. Um I mean like bro, I'm I'm finding resources. Um people trust me and I I'm cool with that. Like how important it is to me again is just I don't know, bro, like yeah it's it's my life. Like it's it's knowing that it's knowing that I can make a, a impact in my community, like even further than 
the homies. Mm-hmm. I can say that. It's like uh, going back to the good kid, Mad City. It's like I feel like I'm that representation to somebody else now. You know what I'm saying? It's just a bunch of like full circle <laughs> moments. So it's like for me to finally find it, it's, it's everything to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I may quote you wrong. Yeah. I think you said something along the lines of uh, you not being alone as far as like you're not progressing in a per- a person's purpose or something like that. They're yeah. finding their purpose or whatever. Yeah. And so you got to let them go. Yeah. And I don't know if you're talking about romantic relationships or just yeah. just relationships, period. Yeah. That was, that was more intimate, though. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> to be able yeah. to come to that and be, that's unselfish like a motherfucker. Yeah. It would be selfish for you to stay, cause you know we all be with somebody. Like, that's that that's me right there. Bro, I don't want to let that go. Talk to talk to you. Like, go ahead. Yeah, hey, I seem like you know I'm a little older now. It's like you want to get them rings. It's like <laughs> it's over with. You know what I'm saying? But it's like in the back of back of your mind, you know, it's like man, it's like she wanted them once. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A couple times, bro. But it's just until I'm in a situation where I feel like I can. Provide. I'm not talking about oh, let me, let me buy you a house, start your business. Like not that type of like providing, but it's just um the emotional intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Like being able to like being a constructive like it's a relationship, but it's also a partnership. I want to be able to understand more, and I'm just now getting to that part of my life. You feel me? To where I'm like I feel like I could probably date now for real. Yeah. It's like I'm thinking back and like, what the fuck was I doing? Like all the way up until now, you feel me? Growing, growing, experiencing. That's, That's it, bro. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, that was that was it. It's like I knew I wasn't selfish, like you said, though. Yeah. It's like they might. I mean, they looked at me all kind of ways. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's got a picture or something. Yeah. It's like you you yeah. hide somebody, like yeah. you know what I'm saying, or like just anything. Yeah. I'm like, man, it's not that. It's just I ain't put together yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, you're a handsome guy, and you can sing like a motherfucker. <laughs> bro, <Hey. laughs> these are on the vocals, auto tune. You feel me? So yeah, so yeah. you you got what it takes to make a person be like, oh, what's what you doing? To where they feel like kind of offended, you know? Yeah. Like, about my decision, I'm like, nah, it's not that. It's like that's why I even had to word it like that. It's like, man, that's really how I felt. It's like I can't. Just, come on, we pinning it. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> you worded it, but I'm like, yeah. this one is a poet. Listen, yeah. man. Love, bro, love. Being numb to mm-hmm. yeah, the situations of death or mm-hmm. whatever you going through in your own life can have you yeah. numb to people's feelings about That's it, bro. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um it was again, cause after my cousin had passed in that car wreck, it's like all the, all the other homies like dying, the violence, because I'm coming up a popular, popular nigga. It's like, so of course, everybody fucking with me, but you know what comes with that in the inner city, bro. It's like every time somebody goes, it's like, it's somebody I know. It's like, it's always like, oh uh, man, like, I was just with him on some, like, but it's real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, real, like, real life for people that I had, like, created some bonds with over some point in time, but they trust me. You know what I'm saying? And then, Funeral after funeral, and uh, start going numb to it. So I would start realizing, I'm like, man, this shit ain't normal. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't like, I don't even feel nothing when this shit happened. Like, it's just like, tell other people the stories. That's why I had to take RPs out of my balls, too, because like, I'm going out to LA, I'm bumping into like CEOs, like AR, shit like that. And they're like, oh, what's all this? And I was like, man, it's like, it wasn't like I ain't want to like live, like, let my. Things like names live on, but it's like I didn't want the representation of like we just like on some like bullshit. Yeah, I was about to say some like fucked up shit, but yeah, yeah bullshit. So yeah, some like we can't move forward. You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah, I grew numb to it, bro. Grew I, numb to it, and I I'm almost positive that's contributed to like me not even taking like a relationship serious. I didn't see the homies like start building situation. I'm like, bro, I. I don't even think I know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like over the years and shit like that. So yeah, it's just it it killed a lot of my um we call it just empathy for situations. You know what I'm saying? 
You said you were seeing a lot of uh, homies building relationships. Did you ever feel like you was missing out? Um, it made me think of situations that I had let pass, but I mean, honestly, I wasn't ready at the time. So yeah, no, yeah. no love lost. It's like I'd be happy I gained another sister. You still follow them on Instagram and stuff, though. Might see oh, them like with somebody. Damn, that was. I'll be seeing the shit. <laughs> Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bitter. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can honestly say I ain't had no like no crazy fallouts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've always tried. I at least tried to like communicate. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't never took nobody through there and fucked up nobody's life or no shit. You know what I'm saying? No shorty's life. So it don't be. Killing me to like still following, like seeing them progress. Like I already knew, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, I could see how the. Uh, I never thought about it till you said it. Mm-hmm. The RIPs and all of that can make the industry be like, nah, it's coming with some shit. Like if yeah. he got all these they RIPs, he's bringing a lot of death with him yeah. and all that. You know what's so what's so fucked up about it, bro? Is that um, it was the same. It was in the same instance as like the artist that do the like, you know, shit, shit up, like that type of music. So when they asked me, I was like, you know, I'm like, like I'm barking back almost in my mind. It's like I ain't take initiative to be like, man, what the fuck is you talking about? Y'all support this nigga, but yeah. it's like you just not them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they might treat you a different way, but um, somebody, one nigga uh, from the '60s, like in LA and shit, he actually told me that uh, Nip. I lost a lot of endorsements because of like, you know, throwing up 60s and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like anything related with that. It's like, yeah, the labels might sign you, but it's like, they already don't care about niggas anyway. But it's like, bro, if you want to hit like the, the All-Star Weekend, the Pepsi commercials, like really yeah. get them endorsements, like really do your thing. It's like, you you might want to just clean up your act a little bit or like how you put it across. Because, you know, we know where Kendrick from, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, Superstar, though. So it's, it's a certain way you got to carry yourself. Yeah. I do want to get back to the relationship, but mm. thinking of Kendrick, thinking of what you're talking about right now, making me think of a lyric J. Cole guy. Mm. He never posted a rapper when he was alive. I post about him when he got, after he got hit yeah. type shit. And I wonder, like, when your people, when you losing your people, you know, it's a there are a lot of people who are hurt by losing that person, mm-hmm. but then it's a lot of people who just jump on the trend of posting somebody or just want to show you that they were around. Yeah, it really wasn't though. You and you, like, I would imagine you can read that shit yeah. too. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you like in those that shit, moments? Oh, that shit is corny, gandy as hell. You feel me? Yeah. It's like I always say our. Oh, our situation is pretty unique being a Wanda because mm-hmm. you know we got three main streets, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like not only when somebody gets killed, it's like it's somebody, you know, uncle, auntie, cousin, like it's somebody that, you know, is like close oh. to you nine times out of ten, but it's like you know who is like around that it's like it's just way too small to not know, you feel me? So I mean it makes them look like corny more than anything. Yeah. I can't really relate it to like, I can't imagine that like in a bigger city. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Cause it's like, man, you don't know if they like, they had a little relationship, shit like that. But it's like, um, I can't take it serious. It's, mm-hmm. it's corny. Did it's it corny. Ever it's disrespectful. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. the disrespect of it. No, like, it's disrespectful. Bro, you trying to trend off of my nigga's name or you mm-hmm. trying to catch cloud off of my nigga's mm-hmm. picture, bro. You ain't had no love for him. Oh, out, of, out of all the things that you could have possibly done while they was alive, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, even a simple conversation can help somebody's day, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I know you wasn't around like that, you're not gang type shit, and to use the opportunity for social media. It's like, I, don't, I already, like, I try to use social media for, like, marketing jokes, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like, just get my laughs off and, you know, make sure the music is getting out there, but people like that cloud is like it's serious bro it's serious and seeing how much of a disease it is when i go to la like how thirsty that is for you how it gets you in the rooms and it only makes me come back and look at those moments that you like speaking on which was real and be like man like shit just look even more corny to me now 
Because you just like, you just wanted that temporary, like, hi, but what the fuck did I do for right. the whole nigga gone? You know yeah, so. And you probably won't say nothing about them next year. Not, not that you're obligated to or nothing like that. And in all fairness to some people mm-hmm. that you don't, there are some people when, because you don't know every part of your man's life or yeah, your true. own girl life or whatever, because you're not there for every single minute. So there yeah. are people who may have established relationships mm-hmm. with that person that you just didn't know. So yeah. in fairness to those people, this is not about you. This is just about the people who know you, so I'll chase <laughs> Oh, B, I yeah. feel like that shit should go across the bottom of the sky. <laughs> what? <laughs> Blow across it. This is not about you. Like, nah, real shit, though. Yeah, for real. real shit. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic, though. You feel me? It's yeah. complex. It's a lot of moving pieces, but it's like some is like come on, man. yeah. But you completely right, bro. Culture shock. We gonna get back to the relationship, but we yeah. kind of in the LA room and stuff mm-hmm. from here to there. Yeah. Was it a culture shock? I know they call us the little <laughs> right. cousin to them and all that, but it is crazy out there. It's so funny because like it's really like GTA. Really. As it, I've only seen glimpses of GTA because I don't really get into it, but I be on YouTube and see right. that. Type. It's really, it's really GTA. It's just for us I come to here, understand. Yeah, break it down type yeah. shit. It's um, cause it's it's different. You know, it's a lot of moving pieces, but everything is intertwined. I think that's the craziest part. Cause it's like you deal with the street politics. You know what I'm saying? It's like these are LA natives. These are LA natives. It's like you probably shouldn't even cross like 17th Street. You know what I'm saying? Going up past like. Hundred and all that, like hundred twenties and all that shit. It's like, but that don't mean that them niggas ain't gonna come past seventeenth the other way. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Start going into the valley. It's like that's when they start, you know, situations start getting tricky. But yeah. um, I think understanding the politics is one thing. It's like just so you know, like we're talking to how to address the situation. Um, then you got the the women. The women, uh, women from the from the trenches is like you got the setup artists. Mm. You got the setup artists. You got a, uh, I mean, shit. The ones who move there for the clout, they'll do the same thing. It's just you, nothing feels like real authentic. I can say the most authentic feeling is like the trenches. It's like these natives. Are like uh, every city got a hood. And as I feel like I'm talking to somebody that knows who they is, at least you know what I'm saying, or like. Ain't trying to be something that they not might not have found their whole purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not to say like that's all niggas can be type shit. But yeah, that's probably like the most authentic part about it, because everybody's playing a character, bro. You know, it's like that shit goes back to the combo is having at the 50 to Jay-Z. The uh, it's like when you superstar, it's like you just in that role every day. So it's like you go to the parties, um, you see a bunch of people that don't do anything, a bunch of women that don't do anything. It's like they supposed to be off the drugs, like going crazy. They, they party, they stay up all night. Um, that idle time is like the devil out there. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So I didn't realize how much idle time niggas be having. It's like, hey, shit, it shouldn't be too hard to like maneuver through this because I ain't even interested in the same shit that y'all is in. You know what I'm saying? And y'all uh, downtime. So it's like you meet those people. Um, and then, uh, I say, like, just to make the world's meet type shit, we was leaving a Chris Brown birthday party. One of, the, one of the homies that got into it with a nigga inside, and then they told security that it was some niggas robbing niggas outside. You know what I'm saying? This Chris Brown birthday party is off La Brea. <laughs> off La Brea, so it's, like, in the trenches low-key. So it's, like, all the little model joints, all the, all the celebrities, all the hood niggas. Like, we all right here. And niggas trying to catch niggas outside, like it's just like stupid, bro. GTA, GTA yeah. online. <laughs> Listen, oh me. Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas was like the same thing to me. Yeah. Like we we family mm-hmm. for the most part. You don't know everybody, but you you know how to maneuver where you are. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? You know where to be looking. You know where to you know you gonna look everywhere mm-hmm. while you're in it, but you. Like there's certain people you do feel safe around. Yeah. You don't. That I'm not saying you don't know nobody out <laughs> Bro, there, but for I ain't gonna hold you on for a second. Nobody out there. It's like I can make calls out there. You feel me? Like I'll 
honest to God, I can make calls out there, but it's like, for one, nobody want to do that. It's mm-hmm. like, that come with some whole other shit. And I was mm-hmm. like, I came out here to make some music and like get shit cracking. Mm-hmm. But two, it's like, hold on, I'm like, are we in these situations and I ain't been in no real shit with y'all niggas? Like, it's like, you don't know. You don't know. So it's like, that shit just, I ain't gonna lie. Like, it's been a few instances like that and it kind of turned me off the party out there because it's like, something happened. It's like, who the fuck in here got me? You feel me? It's like, I ain't in a position where the homies, like my brothers, yeah. is even in LA with me yet. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, it's like, as long as I'm doing this shit by myself, uh, I found some places where I, you know, can network and get my shit off and important people come through and I'm shaking them hands that I need to. But going to celebrity parties is like, why? Like, worst place to network. I say that shit on camera. Yeah. You feel me? It's like, bro, they're not worried about connecting with you in real life. Probably not going to save your numbers loud as fuck. Like, Make sure you catch like niggas like at a fucking grocery store. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Or like a smaller like mixer, but don't fall into the hype of the parties. And everybody go in there staying around. And you can get set up. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, like you said, you don't have nobody here. Mm. So you can't fight off 32 niggas by yourself. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I'm not saying you can't fight. I'm saying yeah. that's that's some shit. I ain't, I ain't like, I can't do the impossible, bro. Yeah. And my whole thing is, I always look about this. I'm like, bro, don't, everybody can be touched. Everybody you know what I'm saying? It's like, if I'm around somebody who feel like they can't, I'm like, hold up, like, you might be moving the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If we step out, then it's like, I don't need, like, bro, we're not trying to worry about shit. Don't get me wrong, we can hold our own, but it's like, we fucking up, like we causing a problem. It's like you making this shit way harder than what it need to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, we just I try to keep the politics to like on some niggas respect me. You know what I'm saying? We respect each other type shit. Leave it at that. Like nobody out here trying to like, play tough though. It damn near sound like and I hope this comparison makes sense. Mm-hmm. It damn near sound like the new nigga in lockup. Don't know nobody there, but how to <laughs> find somebody to, you know what I'm saying, attached to. So no, how real you, shit. Like say those moments come up where yeah. it's like, man, we in some shit. But nigga, I ain't I ain't yeah. I don't fuck around like this. Yeah. I don't move like this. Do you feel some obligation to like the people you may have been called around or whatever to help out to we got to get up out of there. <laughs> I'm saying, like, we got a hand. Like, I'm, yeah, like, bro, yeah. like, I'm obligated. You know what I'm saying? I like, we you. have to get out. You feel me? Yeah. So, in the moment, yeah. yeah. It's like, we can shame on me if I let it get that far, if I ain't read the situation enough. But, yeah, bro. It's like, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I actually do have some homies out there, but, like, they, I always say, like, the, this hell of that feel, but the, um, the film community. It's like, I got some homies that act. I got a couple of DJ homies. Like, they be on some, like, cool scenes. You know what I'm saying? Like, on some grown-ass, like, everybody making money in that bitch and, like, moving forward type shit. So it's like, you know, them my dogs. I can't say that. Yeah. You know, but um, it's like, other than that, like, going to, like, just the random, like, wild parties. It's like, hey, if we get caught in some shit, I put myself here. Because clearly I got enough knowledge about it now. But, yeah. You're a person, and every time I've seen you on pictures or whatever, mm. you've had either, for the most part, a blue KC hat on, <laughs> and now you got this white socks hat on. Yeah, it get crazy, bro. It you know where crazy. I was going? Yeah. <laughs> nah, it didn't, it didn't happen a couple times. Yeah, what? got pressed about it. Talk to me. Um, I used to stay on 3rd in Detroit. Like I said, it only get tricky like past 17. This shit's so funny, bro. It only get tricky past 17. Didn't realize it started that early, though, right? You feel me? Um, On 3rd Street, the um little bars and shit I, like, I used to like to go to over there. Like, before I went over to the valley, it's like, so walking distance. I'm probably walking, like, two blocks. I'm probably, like, 5th, 6th Street or something like that. Just chilling. Nigga walk up on me. Somebody had walked up on me and knew me that night, which is crazy. So I'm thinking it's them again. Nigga walk up on me with his mans and they like, we're like, you know, what, what's the deal? Cause like on some shit, cause I had on my, my KC fitted, bro. I'm like, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. You feel me? That's when I learned like, that, bro, it's probably my first or second week out there. Mm-hmm. I learned about Kitchen Crip. Kitchen Crip. I'm yeah. like, oh man, that's crazy, bro. I had no idea. Cause I know about, I know about my Grape Street niggas out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
French on Mafia. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, we can like make calls here and there type shit. We fuck with the 60s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that nigga hit me with that shit. And then I went to a show. And I went to a show, uh, Payday LA. And the nigga was like, shout out to my new album, Blame It on Kansas. And I was like, bro, what? I look up the nigga shit. He got on all Jayhawk shit. And his his block is like it's like Kansas Avenue is Crips. I was like, all right, bro. Like <laughs> niggas can't like, bro, anything is like violating no key. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's really, it's low, low key, like where you position yourself though. It's like, cause at the time, it's like, oh, the other time it's like I had on a black beanie, black hoodie, like yeah. black pants. I'm all black, nigga. So walk out, this one nigga started talking about like some Hoover shit. And I was just like, what? And it's like, his friends like grabbing him and shit. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm not throwing up his shit or whatever. And his friends grabbing like, bro, don't mind him. And I was like, bro, I ain't even like, they been outside the whole time and see me the whole night. So I'm just like, what? You know, what could it possibly be? I call, call cuz, you know what I'm saying? Great Street nigga. I'm just like, bro, what do this mean? And he was like, Oh no, you can't wear all black, cuz, cuz. Da, da, da. I was like, all right, I'm old. I'm sick of you niggas, bro. He started dying <laughs> laughing. I'm like, all oh, black. I was like, so, I mean, I just started getting comfortable. I was like, I ain't just gonna throw my KC fit and go down that way. You know what I'm saying? I got family that live 109th in Vermont, uh, in the 60s, 60s off of Vermont, too. It's like some brim section type shit. So it's like, you know, both sides and all that. It's like, just paying respect, knowing where you at. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Knowing the logistics, but it's like, bro, it's kind of can't get around it. I ain't gonna lie to you. So them niggas ain't got no sympathy for a nigga who don't. You know how Murphy know. Lee like? You can tell from the way I walk. I ain't from around here. Yeah, kind of. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I, I don't know. I didn't know, bro. I ain't trying to disrespect you. I it's ain't. the most interesting shit ever. It's so like, you just I'll gotta take probably, that shit off right then and there. Right, that happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did they have you in a tremble state at any time? Like, not that nah. you're scared of anybody, did it, but it's like, fuck. This shit is so hard to fucking learn. It's like, God. That's why that's I just called a homie, though. Because yeah, he's like, really from there, yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, yeah, like, you got to put me up on game. I'm like, bro, what do this mean, this mean? And then, like, he'll give me so much game, he'll just start running shit down for me. Because he started getting, like, you know, oh, this is my shit. So, you know, it's like, all right, bro. But, yeah, it's like the politics crazy. Did you ever feel like you really like, because I'm just imagining that nigga with a notebook really writing this shit down <laughs> so I can remember that shit. Like, did you ever feel like, nah, I really note. gotta learn this shit for real, though? Yeah. Because you want to be able to maneuver around comfortably you without know. having to go through that shit. I always say, like, the more you know, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, again, like, rap is credible. You know what I'm saying? As long as we playing around like how we do, you know what I'm saying? How we grew up and it's like, bro, I'm still not going to change who I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I get it. Like, this is where y'all from. But it's like, the more I know and I know how to approach a situation, because they're going to they gonna try to press a goofy nigga. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. yeah. It's like they get a thrill off of that. Mm. So it's like, you got some information and shit. And I ain't going to lie. Like, that might be a situation where I might have to make a phone call. And like, like, where you niggas from? Like, know a couple niggas. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we... My buddy passed, so this shit, nigga, it's like, oh my God. It, it, it's crazy, like, yeah. how, sh- like, strong they are on their shit, right. but they will fall in line to their big homies yeah, and shit. Sure. Like, I don't know if it's so yeah. much like that now, but yeah. nah, like, it, there is a respect, it is. like. But it's so many, it's so many niggas out there, like, it's like, because I remember, because it's like, hey, you fucking 60s and shit like that. He was like, but nigga, that's the biggest crip gang in L.A. It's like, don't. Don't go out there playing, you know what I'm saying? It's like, cause it's like, what you just said applies like a lot of times, like nine times out of ten. But it's like when them like when it's bigger sections, you know, a bunch of young niggas that just don't give a fuck, like they don't care, bro. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like niggas probably try to go behind your back, like just wild shit. You feel me? And ain't no phone call gonna save it. So, yeah. do it really be looking like the? You, you ever seen the wood? Yeah. All right, I was just like, yeah, yeah. some niggas you say the wood, like, yeah. that old ass nigga boot. No, but no, I seen that. Remember when he, uh, when they walk into the store, I guess, and nigga was like, hey, where you from? And he really, they really press you like that on some, 
Because yeah. I think he had Maybe a North Carolina jacket on or had yeah. his North Carolina hat on. It was hat. Yeah. We yeah. love shit, yeah. So it's like. Yeah, where you going with that blue on? It'd be, it be like that, bro, but it's like. That type of shit is like, it really depends on where you at. Mm-hmm. Like how niggas is like trying to see what I was on. It's like, bro, I ain't even like, that's just niggas being lit, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A little out of their mind. Some is like, bro, we had a random ass bar, like not even close enough though. To where niggas like want to try, but it's like, yeah, I can see that shit happening, bro. Like <laughs> niggas in the wrong territory, like yeah. That's real, yeah, that's real. Have you had your share of parties with niggas like Dave, for instance? Hi, I'm Dave. Like the white people now, is it? Because I would imagine that's a whole different culture out there in LA. Like, um, yeah, no, yeah, no, like they. They be having the rich situations, like they pops got some bread. Mm-hmm. And just like, I think one of the first sessions I went to by myself out there is this uh, one white dude staying in the mansion in Sherman Oaks. And he's just like, How you get that? Oh, like, yeah, this is mine, like all mine. Like, my, my dad did this for me. I'm just like, And this shit crazy. But yeah. he um actually engineered some shit or helped on some production for El Wesson Boogie album and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I can only imagine like that dynamic. But, yeah. Yeah, but nah, not too many. It's like, I've really been around like the niggas, I ain't gonna lie. So you speaking on like going back to the relationships, mm-hmm. even with your, where you, where you talk about like being in LA and just seeing how women will set you up on mm-hmm. some stuff, but you, you also get that in Kansas City, not to just now, it, it ain't exclusive be, to one. Yeah, it ain't yeah. exclusive. It may be a different level there because of yeah. the politics or whatever. Or you see some, the money. You see a different type of woman out in LA that you ain't used to and you like really attracted to that. So it's so easy to be drawn to that and get set up and shit. Yeah. And you the new you knew me too. But going through that, but still trying to progress in the way that you think and the way that you move mm-hmm. when it comes to relationship, because you said damn near now you could be in a relationship if it comes in. Absolutely. But yeah. how how is your mind progressing in that way when you you probably seeing it at a worse level? Like, oh yeah. uh, y'all, we got hot girl summer. We got set niggas up type shit. We yeah. got like whatever you went through when you were here in Kansas City. Like your your experience with that. How are you progressing? What is you get what I'm asking? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a bigger population. Though. You feel me? It's like that's. That's the easiest way I can answer is like, it's just, it's more to like, kind of like, it's a bigger dating pool, you feel me? It's like, it's a lot of bullshit, but that is a real specific, it's like, because I only gave you the shorties, like the mom shorties that be trying to go to the parties are like the ones from churches. Yeah. It's like, it's still shorties who are like nurses and shit, you know what I'm saying? Actresses and... um production assistant and like you know what I'm saying it's like you My find brother, shorties that do still do up to up too so and you never know you yeah. never know it's it, and I'm not just talking about specific to yeah. LA either I'm just talking about you in general just how are you with all your experience here mm-hmm. all your experience here how do you get to the point where you like you know what I'm starting to understand women more or starting to understand relationships more and um I'm, I think I may be ready or you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's um me having more of a plan for my life. I'll say that. I'll be honest with you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, because I think that's kind of unfair too. I know the new thing that they be saying online and shit is like, you don't have to wait until you completely like stable to, you know, you don't want to pass up on something like shit like that. But I'm like, man, if I, if I feel like I can get to a certain checkpoint before I bring this part, bring somebody else in into my life, you know what I'm saying? And if I did it the other way around, I feel selfish, then I'm going to just, you know, do it the right way first. And I feel like I have a plan for my life, you feel me? Well, I know that I do. It's like it's actually falling into place now, and now I can actually um, consider somebody else's feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not just counting. Get to a point to where you just like not only account for yourself, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's like that's a whole another job, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, and I'm speaking from kind of experiences. Like, yeah. I again, the homies be doing that shit like through and through and through. But yeah. you know, it's like I know it's all another job, so I wouldn't even like play with somebody else's life like that. 
Yeah. Everything, when you, I think the best way to look at shit is like comparing it to something you love. Mm. You love music. You also wasn't the best musician in the world when you started. Mm. You know what I mean? But as you started, like when you seen certain shit, you probably was like, damn, it's hard to use this idol to It's hard to figure this out or it's hard to do. Yeah. But you got committed to learning that shit. Yeah. You got committed to learning. Every time you learn, it's that, oh, I did that shit. Yeah. I did that. Same in a romantic relationship or yeah. whatever. Like, it can be that fun. I think a lot of people look at it like, and I, I'm guilty of it too. Mm-hmm. In terms of like, nah, this is too much fucking commitment. I ain't got time for that. Yeah. When actually, it's probably what I needed in my life to help me progress. Like, cause a little structure change. Yeah, my relationship with you helped me be a better friend, or helped me learn how to communicate with people better. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you say people talk about um, you don't have to be fully in order fully set up to be able to be into a relationship you think part of that is selfish when it may be what you need though it may be mm-hmm. something you may find your real manager not nah, my nah, she got my fucking back oh yo you know that somebody told me that too like yeah. they started opening up to that girl and they was like nigga i got what i need right here yeah. and i just been closed off to it well uh, killer mike be on too Killer Mike said that too. Said yeah, some stuff like that's, that. yeah, that's how he is with his wife. Uh-huh. Yeah, like she like manager, bro. Yeah. 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 So my advice on that end mm-hmm. is just like, I ain't no fucking guru. Yeah. Just like, because I think sometimes we get caught up in our plan that we're not open to the plan that God really has for us. Because I said, I'm not getting in no fucking relationship yeah. while I'm trying to do this or whatever. Meanwhile, his 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 next piece to what you're trying to get to, you just no, like walk that's out. That's a great way to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what you think about that as far as like incorporate, like not being like so standoffish to to it. Not saying jump into it, but not being standoffish to it. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If it's gonna happen naturally, let it happen. I fuck with that though. Yeah. I fuck with, yeah, I fuck with that approach. That's where everything though. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Just that, God, man, because me being in relationship with my wife, bro. <laughs> nah, I, I, could, I could damn near do nothing but smile, bro. Like yeah. the, how she didn't fucking grow me, bro, and how, like, I feel like I needed her. Now that I'm really looking at it, to be able to be the person I am, to be able mm. to have this conversation with you, to be able to yeah. sit down with the people I'm able to sit down with, because mm. it, it was crazy to me that I'm opening up to all these people, not really necessarily with my life, but like having this conversation with all these other people, but I'm not having this conversation with my wife. I'm not having this conversation with my children or mm. whatever, because I'm not as committed to them as I should be, and I don't feel like I can handle y'all and do what I'm trying to do at the same time. But actually, y'all the better part of what makes this yeah. go well. Once I opened up and figured that out. It's hard, bro. Bro, I don't even, that was God speaking through me because like, yeah. I never even really thought about that until now. Like, mm-hmm. I oh, Once I opened up to my wife and my kids, started really having these conversations with them, it made it easier to have conversations with y'all, which is actually putting me in my purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people have always told me where I'm supposed to be. Like, bro, like, you're supposed to be a counselor. You're supposed to be a therapist, which I don't believe. I mm-hmm. believe I got my own way of having to do it. Maybe it's the, I hate to disrespect a therapist for all the school they didn't went through yeah. and say I'm a therapist or something, but yeah. like, yeah, they really helped that. And that's when I, got open and committed to them so I'm able to commit to what I'm doing. That's hard. Yeah, because now my girl can, my wife yeah. can look at me and be like, well, you ain't fucking with me so I'm not really fucking with what you're doing because what you're doing don't got time for me. Yeah. But now I feel like, eh, eh, like it's a burden. It's it, it's 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 a strong load to carry but I'm built to carry that. That nigga, Talk about it. if Cuz can carry that heavy ass cross, Mm-hmm. While he getting whipped on, mm-hmm. why I can't carry the cross? While I'm getting whipped on, I got this tattoo. Yeah. Years ago, probably when I was 19, 
Well, I finished it off. Well, I just had got a crab because yeah. I'm a cancer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I've always been a person that wanted something that means something. And out of nowhere, I added on to it, added these words. I added these extra crabs that I'm leaving. Not necessarily that it has to be cancer that I'm leaving, but I'm a cancer. So, yeah. But taking that back to our people, I am our people. I am part of yeah. our people. It's carrying this cross. It has Jesus' heart on it. And you can see the vines on there or whatever. Birth of a leader. I was just putting that then. I didn't really know what I was leading. It's coming full circle now because I've never seen these words in the Bible, but they just came to me. The heart of my father says the blood in my eye cannot alter my vision. Same. That's carrying. That's me carrying what he was carrying in my own way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. taking my cross and putting it up on me. And it starting to come true now. Like so all this weight that I I'm built, to carry, I'm built to carry that. Built to carry that. I'm built to carry that. And that's what I always try to tell people when you think it's getting too heavy, you can still carry it though. Because yeah. you've seen that you you've seen that you can carry it. Honestly. You just had to stop for yeah. you and take a break. You're human. Yeah. You're human. You know what I'm saying? I know I went off on a tangent. Too. I say that a lot, bro. I'm like, I'm human. You know? It's like uh I say, as long as I'm here, I still got a chance. Because I say that a lot. You know, I lost too many homies. Lost too many people in, you know, my short life that I've lived. Yeah. Like, damn, I ain't got a chance to do it no more, but I do it for me. I'm for sure. Bro, that a humble the shit out of you. It do. Because I be in, on my last, you feel me? And it's like, I just believe in this shit so much. I be laughing at it sometimes, bro. It's like, damn, like, I'm crazy as it. <laughs> like, I really like I really fuck with this and why are you here mm-hmm. why I get to still be here I was in the same situation with, as them mm-hmm. why my head ain't blown off why I ain't mm-hmm. getting in an accident I'm here or Times the days that supposed I supposed to be around how did I survive yeah. yeah I be feeling like it's God talking to you bro it is. When I'm pulling everything away from you because you're not listening to what I'm trying, you're not paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm yeah. gonna pull slowly until I pull you in, mm-hmm. and eventually I'm gonna pull you away too. Yeah, because you're taking what I put you here for, for granted. Yeah, but you on your shit now. I am. You on your shit, and I am. Found, found my pace, bro. Found my pace, and it's going now. That's the time. Mm. Found my face. That's <laughs> the title right there. That is hard. Yeah, found my hard. face. That's the that's, title. That's it right now. Mm. I told you, I'm excited about like what's going on. Niggas like, figured it out. Figured it out. And it, it took a lot of me just going out to LA and just hugging it, bro. Like, on some, I hit my ceiling in Casey. You know, like I did a lot. Did a lot. Like, made myself known to every promoter. Mm-hmm. DJ, artist, you know, it's like, and it's not bragging, like, oh, I can call them. It's just like, I had a sense of community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, did that. And I was like, oh, I want to, like, take it to the next level. It's like, I have to figure out how to expand. We ain't got no deal. We can't go on no tours yet. I got some connections in LA. I'm going to just do that. You know what I'm saying? And just run the same play. The same shit. It's like I'm a likable enough nigga. You know what I'm saying? People are reaching in the back pocket and say, get along with me enough. And be like, hey, you know, I had this plug, but I ain't had nobody I was like willing to give, like, give this shit to. Having to meet plenty of times, bro. Just say, like, grateful. Grateful for it and see how to utilize shit and just keep pushing forward. But it's been only a, a year and like, you know, like three, four months. And it's like we, at that checkpoint, like shit got to change, bro. So you're finally okay with your pace, no matter what people think, though. Because yeah. I, I can I can understand how it can be pressure of like, damn, I need I probably need to be doing this, or mm-hmm. this is not pleasing to them, or yeah. this is not. Funny. You know, I, I used to always say, uh, I wouldn't be. No, nah, what I just uh, I, y'all wouldn't be worried about me if it if it wasn't for me. Real shit. You feel me? Because it's like, I started making me, nobody told me I had to start rapping. Like, bro, you should rap because uh, it's like, I remember pulling up on TJ and Dre, like, hey, bro, I, I'm a rap. 
But nobody told me. Nobody was like, hey, it's like after I took initiative, niggas like threw me some game like, hey, shit, study this, study this. But it was up to me to like really like put in the work. You feel me? So I'm being no rush, bro. It got to make sense. got to make sense. Bro, that quote was ill as shit. Ill as shit. I said that in like 20, 2015. If it wasn't for me. Because they will get on you like that, bro. And like social media only got more and more bolder. Like, and I was like, come on, my nigga. Like, it's going, like, the product is going to be what it is. Like, but I'm human. I still have to grow. It's like, I get that we are characters, but it was like artist development being put on blast. You feel me? It's like, damn, I got to deal with y'all critiquing my shit. I'm like, bro, this is like my fucking 10th song I ever made. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, but thick skin, again, I took initiative. Nobody told me to do this shit. This is what I really love, man. Yeah, it took it all the way here, bro. I'm like, I'm grateful for the journey. It's crazy yeah. to think about. Yeah. yeah. And I think along the journey with the hits and the, the misses and all that shit, just acknowledging yeah. that you Human is a big deal too. Like, nigga, mm-hmm. it's okay for me to be pissed off right now, yeah. but be pissed off in my moment. Hop back on the mission. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. In closing, man, leave us mark, marked out, and oh, get us with that prayer. Wait, before you, I mean, before that, is it anything you want to get off your chest before you hit us with the mark? We we said it a few times, just like, you know, just keep keep in mind that you are human. It's like as long, long as you're here, you still have a chance to, you know, go get whatever it is that you want to get. You know, it's like, and that's and that's the bottom line. It's gonna be a lot of people telling you how things should go. Um even if they ain't even did it themselves yet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, really put things into perspective because it is your life and nobody else's. Yeah. You know, you want to, down the line, like, you want to be able to say that you're happy with what you even, like, tried to do. At least try, you feel me? Because I, like, I feel crazy if I didn't try to do this. And, I mean, I see where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's not a race. Everybody else's situation is, like, not yours, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a word. Uh, I say that no, no situation is exclusive, but every experience is individual. You feel me? So it's like the way that you go through shit is like ain't got to be like how everybody else go through shit, mm-hmm. even though they might be similar situations. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like <clears throat> be on, be on your own type of time. Like you are your own person. Cause yeah, it's a bunch of like people trying to be like the next person right now. Yeah. A bunch of clones in this shit, bro. Like, yeah. Shit is annoying. Like nobody personable enough. There's no individuality. And once you get that back, you fuck around, and find out who you is. But um, um, what they what they say on that shit? I'm about to do the mark. Hold up, it was too cold. The, the mark. Yeah. I think it was as simple as uh. Life takes a lifetime. And that was just like on some pace. That's hard. Yeah, some pace, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, life takes a lifetime. So it's like all that pressure, really a lot of the things that we cover. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The pressure, the trials, the, the trauma. It's like it's a lifetime. So as long as you're here, it's like, you know, life is still going on. So how to, you know, make the best of it. Life takes a lifetime, bro. And you never too old, like you said. As long as you're here, you you got a you got purpose. You got, and I I feel like a lot of times we limit our our reach to just the youth. Mm-hmm. We talk about yeah, I got to do this for the youth. I feel like you got to do this for everybody. Because yeah. when you think about it, or the older generation, they really babies in this newer generation because they don't yeah. understand it. That's so we got to raise them up too. They got to raise us up. Yeah. The younger ones got to raise us up. We got to raise them. Like, that's just all of us coming together and teaching one another. You know what I'm saying? You can learn something from everybody. I love everybody. It ain't just the the youth. And I don't want to make my, I don't want to make the people older than me feel like they're dead because you still have a reason to exist. Absolutely. And you still got a lot to fucking learn. Yeah. Because you said 
what did you just say? A life, life takes a lifetime. Life takes a lifetime. Life, yeah. yeah. Um, last is on you. Mark us out. Pray whatever yeah. you want. Say a prayer and we're going to be out, man. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here for this conversation. And, um, thank you, Father God. Just uh, allowing us to enlighten each other, community, or anybody who's tuning in. Um, I know that it's a lot of people that could appreciate the information and just bless them, pass it on. And uh, again, just continue to learn from each other. Um, That's true. And pray that we continue to receive the, I pray that we continue to be in a space to receive the blessings that you have prepared for us. Um, I pray that we are able to recognize the flaws in our journey and um, correct what's needed in order to move forward. Um, I pray that we are able to keep our loved ones close and continue to be a vessel for those who need it. These are the prayers we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I appreciate you. Appreciate mm-hmm. you taking this time to sit down. I've instantly grown a love for you. Yeah. So I love you. You too. Um, and I'm blessed to share this air with you. Thank you. Bro. The goal is to leave a lasting imprint on their minds and their hearts. We pray you've been a double good morning.